to try to put the Blue Jays over the 500 hump. That's the lineup he'll be facing. It'll be SP Palmero, Sierra, Baines newly acquired. He's the DH, bats in the cleanup spot. Julio Franco having an MVP type year. Pete Cavigli in left field. Steve Bouchelle hit his 11th home run yesterday up John Cerruti. Veteran Jim Sundberg moves into the second spot on the all-time games caught behind Bob Boone and Jeff Kunkel's the shortstop. He'll bat ninth. In the Blue Jays outfield tonight, a big change. Bell is not in left. Wilson is. Mosby in center and Felix over in right. And the infield's the same. Gruber, Fernandez, Liriano, McGriff, and Whip. As Cecil Espy steps in to lead things off for the Texas Rangers. And that's his fastball, a little inside. Mauro Goose Gazzo, 23 years old, 6 foot 3, 212 pounds. He was acquired by the Jays in the minor league draft from Kansas City for a mere $12,000 last December. And he comes right at you. He's going to throw fastball, split finger pitch primarily. He also has a slider and a curveball. Looks like there's not too much finesse to him right at you. Here it is. I tell you, he throws some heat, it looks like. You know, what's good about this, he hasn't had time to sit around and ponder his first Major League start. He gets to the ballpark, throws his uniform on, goes out to the bullpen, warms up. Let's go get him. Foul back out of play. Espy, the leadoff batter for the Rangers, has really been plagued by a poor on-base percentage. Only 304 coming into this game. He's got outstanding speed. 33 stolen bases, but as a leadoff hitter, he needs to get on base a little more often. Gazzo said his fastball gets up around 88 miles an hour. Ellis Dungan, a Blue Jay scout who has spent the last six years scouting in the southeast part of the United States, is the scout who recommended that the Blue Jays draft him from Kansas City. He was originally in that David Cohn deal. Kansas City did not protect him after he went four and nine at Memphis. And Gazzo said he had control problems at Memphis. Uh, he had the fork ball then, but he didn't use it all that much because he couldn't throw it for strikes. This year's control has been pretty good. Only 31 walks and 122 innings. That's a good fastball right there. When you've got a major league hitter in a full count, 3-2, when you expect a fastball from a youngster, and Espy was still behind that one, indicates that he's got pretty good velocity. There is nothing like a player's first major league game. Everybody's pulling for him. Line at Leary. Speedy Espy. How about that Nelson Liriano? That's one change that Gazzo will get used to quickly is the quality of the major league defense. In the minor leagues, this is a hit. It goes through the infield, but Liriano flags it down, gets to his feet quickly, and fires a strike to first. Gazzo behind on the count, three and two, had to come down the chute to Espy, and he drilled it to Liriano. Rafael Palmero, the hitter. There's a split finger pitch, just missing low. Palmero's average really taking a dive. Last 64 games, hitting just 209. He's the guy who finished second in the National League batting race last year. Hit 307 for the Chicago Cubs. Pops it up. Wilson comes in, makes it look easy. He wants some help. That's what he's saying to Fernandez. Help me out now. We've got to communicate a little bit. Wilson has moved from right to left. Now Bell gets a night off DHing. Runs a long ways. Makes a nice play. Don Deckinger, the home plate umpire and the crew chief. Uh, Tim Sheeta down at first, Derwood Merrill at second, and Steve Palermo down at third base. And the batter with two down here in the first inning, Ruben Sierra, who's having an MVP season for the Texas Rangers. He sure has been slumping lately, though, hasn't he? 
he's a little bit less selective recently. What's happened is he's, you can see his number, MVP bound, definitely. RBIs, extra base hits, and triples. Ground ball, fair ball. McGriff makes the play over to Gazzo. He does a nice job covering. Hey, the rookie's got it done here in the first inning. And he's enjoying himself. You're watching Lobats Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Bo knows baseball. Bo knows football. Bo knows basketball, too. Bo knows tennis? No. Bo knows weights. Bo, you don't know diddly. Tonight's starting pitcher for the Texas Rangers is Bobby Witt. And Bobby, you've made some adjustments on the mound mentally that's probably caused you to get that velocity back. Well, I have, Buck. Um, the biggest thing that I can that I can say I've done is uh, gone out there and really just forgot about the mechanics, the whole part of mechanics. I think that's when I ran into trouble when I was going out to the mound thinking about more or less what I was doing on the mound rather than going out there and just letting it happen. And by doing that, I've been able to uh, you know, put a few wins together, get the velocity back up, and have a lot more consistency. Bobby Witt started the year out 2-0 and in his first three starts, then went 3-8, and and has battled back now to a 9-9 and record. That's the lineup he'll be facing. Fernandez, Felix in right, Gruber at third, Bell the DH tonight, McGriff, Witt, Mosby, Wilson, and Luriano. For Texas, Incavilla, Espy, Sierra in the outfield, Bouchel, Kunkel, Frankel, Palmero, Sunberg behind the plate, Bobby Witt on the mound. Fernandez, the leadoff hitter for Toronto, just two hits in his last 20 at bats. His average now is dropped down below 250, and he is a Blue Jay who's been struggling lately. Tony told me yesterday, he said, I just can't understand why I'm not playing better. I said, you know, you don't look happy. You're not smiling. You're not having any fun. I just noticed that today, walking out of the clubhouse. He had just been in looking at videotapes of his batting, trying to figure something out, and he came out, and he really had a scowl on his face, like he didn't like what he saw in there, but didn't know how to rectify it. Last 25 games, Tony's hit just 211. Looks like something's playing on his mind. He's just not relaxed and confident. I don't see him smiling as much as we're used to. Three and one the count. Full count. As far as Bobby Witt goes, he was getting pretty mechanical. Worried so much about his mechanics and throwing off-speed pitches that he actually lost the velocity on his fastball. Now he's shelved all of that, as you heard in the interview, and he's just coming right at the hitters. For, and he has regained some velocity. Just Strikes blew the out, fastball Fernandez. right by Fernandez. Lifetime Witt is 2-1 and one against these Blue Jays. In his only start this year against Toronto, he went just two innings, gave up five hits, seven runs, only two of them earned, and he gave up a grand slam home run in that one. Walked a couple, struck out a pair. Toronto won a 10-9, and look at the reaction on an unhappy Tony Fernandez's face. Boy, when you get mired in a batting slump, Sometimes that can go right out to the field with you. And Fernandez seems to be really carrying an awful heavy burden right now with this batting slump. Well, Junior Felix back in the lineup tonight. He suffered that sprained shoulder back in New York on the 29th of July. Boy, Witt's got good velocity tonight. He's getting it up there. He came into the major leagues with a 94, 95 mile an hour fastball. There's a slider that he's also had better command of lately. And then Witt was prompted by some batting or some pitching coaches, Bobby House, that Tommy House, that he needed to get more breaking pitches over. And when he concentrated so much on the breaking pitch, he lost some velocity on his fastball. That's a pretty good pitch. Two and two to count now. 
Well, it's sure good to have Felix back in the lineup. Got all that speed now in the outfield. Wilson in left and Felix in right. And the main thing is you've still got George Bell's bat in the lineup. And Bell defensively, lately, he's, he's come up with some big plays, especially the other day against New York. Threw a perfect strike to Gruber at third. And look at him. He's right in this ball game, isn't he? Cheerleading his teammates. Oh, pop up. Shallow left field. Kunkel the shortstop. Leaves it for Encavilia. And he makes the play. Encavilia really gets a lot of heat for not being a very good outfielder. He's worked awfully hard, especially with Coach Davey Lopes last year. You can see him talking to Kunkel that he didn't really pick it up until late, but Inky has done a pretty good job improving out there. He's not graceful. He doesn't remind you of a speedy outfielder, but he hustles well, plays hard, and works hard at improving. Remember the night that Alvarez, the rookie, started for Texas against these Blue Jays? Gruber hit a home run off him. So did Fernandez. Davey Lopes looks on. Great infielder with the Dodgers. Later on in his career, played some outfield, came to the American League, played for the Oakland A's, but he worked very closely with Incavilla and was pleased with the effort he got from the big left fielder. Lopes feels that anybody that has athletic ability, obviously Incavilla has that kind of ability. He's a big guy, but he can run. He had desire. They worked hard. Lopes hit him tons of fly balls. And Incavilla improved. Well, all these Blue Jay fans here tonight wondering if tonight's the night the Jays finally get over that 500 mark. A ball and two strikes to Kelly Gruber. It's hard to believe that the Jays would be celebrating that game that gets them over 500. But it's been that kind of season. Fly ball right field. Ruben Sierra is there for the third up. So an easy inning for both pitchers. And after one, no score. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. No score here at the Sky Dome as we go to the second inning as the rookie Mauro Goose Gazzo will face Harold Baines, the DH, Julio Franco, the second baseman, and Pete Incavilia. And that's a pretty potent offensive lineup, isn't Boy, it? Boy, they've got a balanced attack now. Gazzo making his first major league start here tonight. His folks were driving up from Connecticut to see him pitch last night in Syracuse. That was scratched. And they're on their way to Toronto now. Hopefully they're here by now. Didn't his girlfriend call from the airport and say, hey, where are your parents? Look at that. They've they're already got some up signs up. Yeah. <laughs> Base hit up the middle. Harold Baines. So that's a hit that Gazzo will always remember. Cito Gaston, you've said all along that Lloyd Mosby is your center fielder, and yesterday he came through with a couple of fine defensive plays. He made some great plays out there, and uh, I guess one that's probably is overlooked, uh, he can be hit a ball in the gap, and uh, he made an excellent throw to second base. Of course, he didn't get him, but it was a lot closer than a lot of people would think. But uh, he's my center fielder until, uh, you know, if, if he goes down with his back or whatever, and then we'll put someone else out there. Julio Franco, the hitter, he takes a strike, and Mosby, in yesterday's game, took two hits away for extra bases, both of them, from Franco on two great catches. One to left center, one to right center. Mosby playing as well as I've seen him play in center field for a long time in yesterday's game. And those plays snapped an eight-game hitting streak for Julio Franco. And he's in a battle with his teammate for the RBI lead. Ruben Sierra with 81 RBIs, Franco with 80. The only day game in the majors, oh, those Montreal Expos losing to Chicago 4-2. Dennis Martinez, 12-2, he took the loss in that one. Now Montreal falls a game and a half behind the Cubs. They've lost six in a row. Mark Grace broke up a two-all tie with a seventh-inning homer in that one. As the Cubs now have won 10 of their last 13. Whoa, Franco goes down. How 
about that pitch from a youngster. Gazza said, well, if I'm going to pitch in the major leagues, I might as well pitch like a big leaguer. He dusted a pretty good hitter right there, and that's the book on Franco. Inner half of the plate is always good, but off the plate inside is really good. Watch this little chin music up there. As we said, Gazzo, six foot three, 212 pounds. He should have no problem protecting himself. <laughs> yeah, I don't think hitters will run out there in a mad dash. Pretty stout young man. Now Franco digs in. Baines at first. Pops him up. Lariano, the second baseman, calls off Mosby. You know, it's one thing to make a good pitch inside, knock a hitter off the plate, but unless you back it up with a good pitch behind it, it's really kind of lost, but Gazzo got the off-speed pitch over and got Franco to pop up. So that word will spread quickly on the Ranger bench. Pete Incavilia, the hitter. Last 15 games, hitting just 203, three home runs, and is driven in 10. Gazzo's got good velocity. Looks like he's fairly relaxed and confident of himself. Well, he started out in long relief in Knoxville, worked his way into the starting rotation, went 7-0. Then they moved him up to Syracuse, where he went 5-1, and, and wasn't in the starting rotation in Syracuse when he got there either. So he's been patient, and patience has paid off big dividends here in August. The 2-0 pitch, high and inside, all three. Just overthrowing those fastballs, putting a little bit too much effort into it, and it's got him out of the strike zone high. A little more deliberate, a little more compact delivery right there. Got him back down in the strike zone. Well, yesterday when they announced that Gazzo was coming up, most of the media people said, well, who's he? And Cavilla, high fly ball to Mosby in center, and Felix in right. Felix takes it. Two down. And when you knew that Cummings, who was 2-0 with the Blue Jays, he was injured, pulled a muscle. And Hernandez. Hernandez, Xavier, he's on the DL with arm problems. So the Blue Jays came up with Gazzo, who has a combined record of 12-1. and one. In a situation like this where Gazzo might just come up for a short time, you go with the hot hitter. So we look at the outfielders communicating a little bit better. Steve Bouchel, the hitter. He homered off Cerruti in yesterday's ball game as 11th of the season. baseman isn't he very quick a lot of range at third good strong arm ground ball Fernandez charges it he'll step on the bag to get the force on Harold Baines couple of easy innings for the rookie Morrow Goose Gazzo no score still at the Sky Dome in Toronto you're watching the bats Blue Jays baseball on TSN George Bell, you've been upset about DHing before. Now you're going to DH tonight, first time with Felix and Wilson in the lineup. How do you feel about the DH, bro? Well, I don't feel real good about it, but uh, we, you know, we trying to win. And I'm pretty, you know, we're pretty close to win the pennant race, uh, the division. And I know I'm going back to left field again, but uh, tonight I'm going out there, you know, I'm going to do the, G, you know, DH up. And I told, you know, I talked to Cito, and anytime he want, you know, he want to use me like a DH, you know. He got to tell me, you know, day ahead, and I'd be ready so I can be prepared. That's what you like to hear. Isn't that the truth? He says, as long as he comes to me and says, this is what I want you to do, no problem at all. Well, that's good news. Hey, it improves the defense out there. No matter what you say, Wilson, Mosby, and Felix, three speedy outfielders. Bell will be back in left field, but he's going to be asked to DH from time to time. Yeah, a lot more time. A lot more, I think. 
Cito Gaston with the acquisition of Mookie Wilson and Lee Mazzilli. Now Felix is healthy again. We all knew this day was going to come where you had the DH George Bell. How did you handle that situation? Well, you know, Buck, I, I believe just telling guys what you want to do and and uh, talking to them about it, and that's what I did with George, you know, and and of course uh, it's it's fine with George. In fact, the last road trip we went on, George said to me, you know, Cito, maybe somewhere on this road trip I need to DH a couple of days. You know, you might be sitting at home saying, well, why would you have to take a guy aside and say, hey, listen, I want you to DH tomorrow. Is it okay? And really, that's not what Cito is saying. It's I don't... more of a communications problem that uh, I think Jimmy Williams had in the past with George Bell. I don't think Cito was asking for George's consent. He was simply saying, listen, I'm going to DH you tomorrow. Yeah, it sounds like yeah. that, though, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> Bell pops it up out into center field. Espy comes in. He makes the play. Oh, but George is right. The Blue Jays are taking a shot at winning their division, and he'll play wherever he has to. This TSN telecast is presented by authority, the Toronto Blue Jays, and may not be rebroadcast in any form without the express written consent of the Jays. Big Fred McGriff steps in with his 29 home runs and 70 runs batted in. Talk about an MVP season. That's what he's having. Good matchup of real bright shining young players in the American League. Bobby Witt on the mound. Fred McGriff the home run leader in the American League. McGriff is in the top 10 in eight of the offensive categories in the American League. And he's on a six game hitting streak right now. Uh oh that is hit deep to left. Kiss it goodbye. for Fred McGriff. Well, Buck gets his 10th home run here at the Sky Dome. He sure is not having any problems with this part. And he doesn't have to pull it. It's a breaking pitch that Witt leaves out over the plate, and he drives it into that first level of seats in left field. That's a split finger pitch that just stayed up in the strike zone and broke away from McGriff, but it didn't break down and stayed up in the hittable range. Once again, Bobby Witt gets hurt by Fred McGriff on an off-speed pitch, something other than his good fastball. One nothing, the Blue Jays leading it. Witt hits a fly ball out into left field, but it's not deep. And Cavilia will make the play for the second out. Fred McGriff, his patience at the plate has really come along quickly, working closely with Cito Gaston. Now he leads Rob Deere of Milwaukee by five, Lou Whitaker by five. 361 feet to the opposite field. Kevin Mitchell of the San Francisco Giants has the major league lead in home runs with 34. And that's what McGriff hit last year. It sure looks like McGriff will pass last year's totals. 34 homers, 82 RBIs. Let's just see how many fastballs Bobby Witt goes to now. He was throwing the fastball by everyone. And the book on McGriff is if you ride the fastball up in the strike zone, which is Witt's strength, you can generally get him out. He threw him that split finger pitch that stayed down and out over the plate. And McGriff hit it for a homer. A ground ball to Bouchelle, the third baseman. So Freddie McGriff, it's home run number 30. The Blue Jays have taken a one nothing lead for their rookie pitcher, Mauro Gazzo. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Fred McGriff has given the Blue Jays a 1-0 lead as we go to the third inning. And it'll be Sunberg, Kunkel, and Espy for the Texas Rangers. The Rangers have lost five of their last six. And on this road trip, they've lost two out of three to Detroit. Same thing in Milwaukee. 
As a matter of fact, the Rangers have lost nine of their last 13. Really slumping. Nine games back of the California Angels. Jim Sundberg tonight moves into sole possession of second spot on the all-time list of games caught 1,919 Major League games. Of course, the leader is the big guy, Bob Boone from Kansas City. Cito Gaston feels that both Boone and Sundberg are the toughest catchers on the hitters for calling a game. And I'll have to agree with that because neither one of those catchers establishes a pattern when they're behind the plate. Always keeps the hitter off stride, always out guessing the hitter. I uh, was just looking at the numbers. Uh, Sunberg's about 225 games behind Boone. And Boone playing a little more regularly than yeah. Sunberg in Kansas City. I just wonder how long either one of them can continue playing. Well, Sunberg's in his 16th season. Before the regular batting practice today, several of the Texas Ranger players have their children on this trip. Jim Sunberg's son must be about 15 years old, and he was hitting balls out of the ballpark in batting practice. Toby Hare, the coach, asked him if he could play tonight. <laughs> did Pat Gillick see that? I bet he did, because he doesn't miss very much. Sunberg's kid was using an aluminum bat and clearing the left field wall. Toby Hare was throwing BP, saying, hey, listen, can you catch tonight? <laughs> Sneak a different number 10 behind the plate. A full count to Sunberg. Ground ball, Fernandez one-hands it. Throws low, but McGriff digs it out. We talked about batting slumps possibly carrying onto the field defensively. Watch this throw. Fernandez, an easy play. It never really sets himself. An off-stride throw. It goes in the dirt, and it takes a good scoop by McGriff to dig it out of the dirt. He nonchalanted it. That's he sure he did. did. He just didn't get set. And I tell you, this batting thing might be carrying out into the field. I think it is. I don't think there's any question about that. Although Fernandez has only made three errors this season. His defense has not been as sharp as it has been in past years. Kunkel, the hitter, the number nine hitter in the Texas Ranger batting order. Jeff Kunkel has turned into a pretty good player. They played him in center field yesterday, and he made a fine running catch on Mookie Wilson into right center to rob him of extra bases. And tonight, he's at shortstop. Kunkel was figured on to be the future shortstop two years ago. He really wasn't ready. Ernie Witt's our guest on Extra Innings, and we'll be able to talk to Ernie about the rookie, Mauro Gazzo, who gets his first major league strikeout on Jeff Kunkel. He got away with a hanger. Looked like a slider that just didn't get down in the strike zone, but he'll take it. You can see he's shaking his head a little bit as if to say, you've got to get that pitch down. You can't get away with too many of those. Ask Bobby Witt. Cecil Espy, the hitter, who hit a rocket at the second baseman, Nelson Luriano, who backhanded it, made a great play. Pitch is inside, and Espy got his bat out of the way, so it's a ball. be in a slump just two hits in his last 13 appearances that was a bunted ball that hit Espy before he got out of the batter's box that's a foul ball the ball is dead Al Widmar the Blue Jays pitching coach said to me before the game if we can just get five or six innings out of Gazzo he said we'll be awfully happy about that they'll be ecstatic if they could get to Ward or Hinky. Little outside. Two and one the count. Hey, 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 hey. 
plate umpire Don Denkinger has really had a narrow strike zone tonight, but he's been that way to both pitchers. Bobby Witt questioning some calls in the first inning. And now Gazzo, naturally a rookie, is not going to question too many calls, but it looks like there's been a few pitches that could have gone either way. Well, SP is on, and he can steal a base. He's got 33 in the season. Although he's been caught in American League high of 17, so uh, he might give the rookie Gazzo a few problems down there. Let's see what his pickoff move is like. Well, you try to get to a rookie pitcher as quickly as possible and distract him, split his attention between the batter and the runner. Gazzo pitched one inning for the Blue Jays in spring training. Right towards the end, they needed a arm for an inning. He pitched against the Phillies. Then he was sent back to the minor league camp. No one remembered him, but Al Whitmar, the pitching coach, did. Ernie Witt said, uh, I don't remember him in spring training. Well, there's a good chance Ernie probably didn't catch the game, at least at that portion of the game. Generally, that time in spring training, you catch five or six innings, and then Ernie's probably out of the ball game, and Greg Myers or Cabrera would be catching. But when you're down there over a month, you would think somewhere along the line he might have, uh, you know, caught him on the sidelines. He was never in camp. He was in minor league camp, and they called him over from the minor league camp. A ball and no strikes with two down here in the third inning. Espy gets back. He flied out to Wilson in left field in the first inning, so he's 0 for 1. There, oh, I thought Espy was going. Sure looked like it. He gave us the old false start. Pops it up. Gruber, the third baseman, who calls for it, makes the play for the third out. So Espy is left stranded down at first, and we're heading to the bottom of the third inning. The Jays still leading one to nothing. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Well, so far we're seeing an outstanding performance by the rookie pitcher for the Blue Jays, Mauro Goose Gazzo. He has allowed just one hit, and that was a single to Harold Baines to lead things off in the second. But Freddie McGriff has hit his 30th home run, and the Blue Jays lead it one to nothing. Gazzo talking to David Wells, the left-hander. Wells, who has that uh, five-stitch cut in his left hand, and he got some sleepwalking the other night. I know you laugh about that, but it is uh, it, it actually was sleepwalking that did that damage, believe it or not. Said he should be ready by Thursday. Come back. They've got an off day on Thursday, but by then everything should be fine. Didn't damage any tendons. Mookie hitless in his last 12 at bats. Leading Minnesota two to one. Mookie hits one down into the corner and watch him fly. He's going to stay at second. For Mookie Wilson, his third double is a Blue Jay. Mookie moved down in the lineup with Junior Felix coming back. Maybe doesn't feel quite as much pressure to produce down in the lineup, and he gets a leadoff double here as he hooks a breaking pitch just inside the bag by Paul Merrow at first. Sierra has an outstanding arm, digs it out quite nicely, gets it back to the infield, and Wilson stops at second. You don't want to be thrown out at third base as the first or third out of an inning. Lariano, the hitter. Goes after a high pitch out of the strike zone and fouls it back out of play. So Mookie Wilson.
Gibson has put a spark in this Blue Jay offense here in the third inning with a leadoff double. They ran a showing bunt against Witt, such a tough guy to pull with that good hard fastball. Gaston went ahead and put the sacrifice bunt on trying to advance Wilson to third. Look at the defense. They don't play Lariano to pull against a guy like Witt because he has such good velocity. The 1-1 one -one pitch. Ground ball. Base hit. Here comes Mookie Wilson. Two to nothing. Jays lead it. trying to get on top of that fastball and pull it on the right side gets it through the middle and Wilson with that outstanding speed gets the go ahead from Johnny McLaren and comes across with a second run. Oh he can motor can't he. So Liriano drives in his 34th run of the season to give the Blue Jays a 2 nothing lead here in the third inning. Even though Mookie hasn't been hitting as well as he'd like, he certainly has been a spark simply by his excitement and his enthusiasm. Lariano gets back. Still nobody out with Tony Fernandez at the plate. Fernandez struck out in the first inning. Fernandez, back in Texas, hit a grand slam off Bobby Witt. And really, in my mind, is Liriano runs on a pitch out. He's safe. Derwood Merrill makes the call. And here comes Bobby Valentine out of the dugout. Jeff Kunkel had already started throwing the ball around the infield, and the skipper is going to come out and discuss this one with Derwood Merrill. The throw was on the money. Looked like Kunkel put the tag down. Merrill is very sure he made the right call. As he always is. <laughs> the throw was there in plenty of time. It was a pitch out. You people at home be the judge on this one. Kunkel, perfect position, slaps the tag on him. Looked out to me. <laughs> There's another angle. Pretty close. A third time. He put the tag right on his hand. Gunkel was so confident, he started to throw it around the infield. He said, what are you looking at, Mr. Umpire? On a play like that, they'll usually give it to the infielder. Generally, anytime the ball beats the runner there, puts the tag on him cleanly, Valentine loses the argument with Merrill. I'll tell you what, I looked at that three times, and I honestly couldn't tell. I mean, he looked like he might have been out, but... I thought he's out, but I'm a catcher. Looked like the throw was there, the well, tag the throw was, was there. there. There's no question. The tag was there. There's a question whether his hand was on the bag or not. Conkle's going to try to pick him off now and make up for that call. <laughs> for Nelson Liriano, his 12th stolen base of the season. A 1 0 pitch. Fernandez's job now is to get Luriano down to third base with nobody out. And this is when you can really take advantage of being in a batting slump and doing the little things that helps the ball club, even though you're not swinging the bat that well. Just advance that runner over to third. As I said earlier, Fernandez had hit a grand slam off Bobby Witt, and I thought that really set the stage for the pitch that hit Fernandez off Cecilio Guante and put him out of action for over a month. Well, I don't think anybody on either club felt that Guante hit Fernandez. You're right. Fernandez on the walk. Still nobody out. Lariano at second, Fernandez at first, Junior Felix the hitter. Felix 
Brooks with that banged up shoulder facing Bobby Witt, I believe, will probably ask to sacrifice. This is his first game back since banging into that wall in New York where he suffered a separated shoulder. So this might be a good opportunity to have Felix lay down the sacrifice, advance the runners to second and third, concede the run, concede the out, and then you'll have Gruber, Bell, and McGriff. Trying to pad that two-run lead. Witt has allowed five runs or more seven times in his last 12 starts. And he went four and one in the month of July. Fouls it back. Soon is here. Te amo. We love you. Junior is back. And let's hope he stays well and healthy. Follows that one back out of play. And he's a pretty good bunter. Well, he hasn't faced live pitching in about a week. And just a little bit behind Bobby Witt's good fastball. Witt is a bit of a mystery for the Texas Rangers. Last year he went down to AAA, worked with Ferguson Jenkins, the AAA pitching coach, came back and went 8-4 and four after the All-Star break. Really pitched very well. They thought he was on the road to... They, sh they should have brought Ferguson Jenkins up with him. <laughs> Turn a kid like that around. Well, you know, they've got Tom House who has really been praised a lot, but I don't know if he's really enjoyed that much success. Well, what has the Texas Ranger pitching staff ever done? Not too much. Two of the biggest prospects, Guzman and Correa, have been on the shelf for two years now. But House gets a lot of notoriety about being such a unique pitching coach, employing a lot of different ideas. The one he uses the most is the old football. Gets it out, gets the entire pitching staff throwing it. I have never known too many quarterbacks to win in the American League. <laughs> Here's the 0-2 pitch. Strikes him out. For Bobby Witt, that's his second strikeout. And that's a big strikeout because Felix was sent up there to sacrifice the runners along, and there he comes with that fork ball, breaks down and away. That's what he was trying to do to McGriff when he left it out over the plate, and McGriff hammered it for his 30th homer. If Whip can pitch his way out of this jam, it will be a job well done. Kelly Gruber flied out to Ruben Sierra in the first inning. Double steal. And Sunberg cannot hold on to the ball. So that's as good as a sacrifice ball. When you've got Liriano and Fernandez on after the sacrifice didn't work, even though Sunberg threw the ball well to second base trying to get Liriano. Go ahead and gamble. The ball goes off Sonny's heel. It was a sinking ball that got away from him. Notice how he tried to catch it, Buck. He went down, didn't turn that glove underneath, didn't make it where he turned his glove and scooped it. Caught it off the heel of his glove. It'll be scored a double steal. Did Gruber go around? They look for the appeal down to Tim Sheeta. And he said yes. So it's a ball and a strike on Gruber. You be the judge. There's a ball in the dirt. He certainly went around. Hit out of the left field in Cavilla. As Liriano tags, he'll come in and score easily. Fernandez will stay at second. Sacrifice fly, RBI, Kelly Gruber, his 55th run batter in this season. Kelly Gruber 
with his second sacrifice fly in as many days. He was the difference in the ball game yesterday when he drove a ball to right center. And that's a good mindset for a hitter to go up there thinking about getting a pitch up in the strike zone that you can drive deep enough to the outfield to cash in at least one run. The Jays now leading three to nothing here in the third inning. George Bell, who flied out to Espy in center field in the second inning. Bell was showing a great mood today, wasn't he? I think he really is feeling the excitement of this club getting back in the pennant race. Now he's looks like he's hurt his shoulder again, and I hadn't noticed that for the last no, week or so. I had not. Like he'd been pretty much over it, but he took a pretty good cut at that pitch, and every once in a while that shoulder will flare up again and bother him. Take a look at this swing. Starting to get some force back in that swing, but when he really felt followed through with it, looked like it kind of put some added pressure on that shoulder. So the rookie, Mauro Goose Gazzo, has been staked so far to a 3 nothing lead. And he has done a great job. Through three, he has allowed just one base hit. hit safely in nine of his last 12 games 16 career home runs off Texas pitching just one this season Rick is only 25 years old there have been a lot of comparisons to a young Nolan Ryan with his good velocity and the fact that he's also had some problems with control. There's a slider that Bell swings and misses. Well, Ryan has sort of taken Witt under his wing, hasn't he? He has, and Witt feels like there may be some unfair comparisons. He doesn't want to be compared to Nolan Ryan, and obviously there's no fair comparison right now at this stage in his career. But Witt never really knew the Nolan Ryan that people are talking about when they compare Bobby Witt at this stage. Bell manages to foul that one back out of play. And with so many pitches out of the strike zone, he can still get that bat on it and keep his at bat at live. He has good plate coverage. He, his body flies away from the plate, but his bat stays back. That way he can flick that bat and fight off those real borderline pitches. Baltimore leading Minnesota 3 to 1 in the third. this year and the last several years at Houston since 1980 but before that he started way back in 68 with the Mets and he could throw real hard but he was never really too much of a pitcher basically until he put everything together as a California Angels in the mid 70s. Fouls back another one. Looks like another full house here tonight. A game that is sold out. You know, the Blue Jays only need to average 25,464 to hit 3 million, and they'll do that it's like a piece of cake. No problem. It'll be well over 3 million this year. Strikes him out. Number three for Bobby Witt. As Fernandez is left stranded down at second base, the Blue Jays get a couple more runs and take a three to nothing lead. You're watching the bats Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Now let's go to this TSN sports update. And this update is brought to you by your local bottler of Coca-Cola Classic. 
Welcome back to our Control Center. I'm Chris Edens. We'll head back to the Sky Dome in just a moment. The Blue Jays two games back of the Baltimore Orioles in the American League East coming into today's action. The Orioles hosting the Minnesota Twins tonight. Yeah, Bottom of the first sorry. inning. Twins up 1-0. Man aboard for Cal Ripken Jr. He lashes one down the third base line. It rolls all the way to the corner. Phil Bradley will burn up the base pass from first base. He comes in to score easily. We're tied at one. Two batters later, twin starter Rick Aguilera runs into more problems. He faces Joe Orsalak, and Orsalak lines one up the middle. They're waving home Cal Ripken. The throw from Kirby Puckett is cut off. Ripken's in safely. The O's take a 2-1 lead after two. By the way, Orsalak tried to turn that one into a double. He was uh, caught at second base and was uh, out. It is now Baltimore leading the game 3-1, playing in the third inning. Let's go back to the Sky Dome. Buck and Fergie right after this. Well, there's Cleveland beating New York. Corey Snyder has hit a two-run homer for the Cleveland Indians in the fourth inning. And a story out of New York today, Yankee manager Dallas Green says he expects to be fired perhaps before the season is over with. He says that uh, he thinks it'll get a little uglier in New York if we don't start winning. Green went on to say that we have a baseball team that is doing everything it possibly can to hang tough in a lousy pennant race. If we weren't in this division, we'd be so far behind it wouldn't be funny. And you know how impatient Mr. Steinbrenner is. Even though Dallas Green has a two-year contract. Well, Steinbrenner has a history of firing people and paying them off, keeping them around. Lou Pinell is still over there in New York. He was fired as a manager. It's almost like you have to pay a sentence once you agree to become a Yankee manager. And speaking of the Yankees, you know, Tom Hankey came out on the field. And I said, what happened to you? You shaved your mustache off. He said, you know, Charlie Fox, one of the Yankee uh, coaches, got on me so bad, was calling me ugly and everything else from the dugout the other day that I decided to shave off my mustache. He said, I couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> he said that he, he said Charlie Fox was all over him. We're going to get you a big ugly dummy. <laughs> he said, I was peeking over there to see who it was. <laughs> Ruben Sierra pops it up in the infield. Lariano calls for it. And the slump for Ruben Sierra continues. Just one hit in his last 15 plate appearances. He's having such an outstanding year that maybe he's thinking, well, I don't want any of these things to slip away from me. There's a chance to... The MVP, you can see, slams his helmet down on the dugout steps. The kid, number 47, Mauro Goose Gazzo, has allowed only one hit, and that was to this man right here, Harold Baines, back in the second inning, a line drive single up the middle. The Labatt's player of the game for Toronto will receive the new Canon Prima shot with remote control. The automatic compact Prima shot, all the latest technology, plus the world's first infrared remote control. Now the invisible picture taker can always be in the picture. As well, an amateur baseball team will be the guest of Canon at a future Blue Jays game. Two and one the count. Chopped in behind the plate, so foul ball evens it up at two and two. Baines recently acquired from the Chicago White Sox in that deal that sent Scotty Fletcher and a couple of young prospects, Wilson Alvarez and Sammy Sosa, to Chicago in exchange for Harold Baines and Fred Manrique, the former Blue Jay. Tom Grieve, the general manager here today, said, well, I had a chance to get the best DH in the game, and we've been wanting to improve the DH spot for two years. I made the deal. Liriano jumps, makes the play but not in time. Baines, bad knees and all, beats it out. Well, Nelly got in between with Baines beating the ball into that turf. It was headed up the middle. And there are some uneven spots in this turf, uneven in terms of just how high they bounce. Lariano had to jump to catch the ball initially, and then he was off balance and never had enough on it to get Baines. So Harold Baines, two for two tonight, Gazzo. 
Franco, the second baseman, popped up to Liriano in the second. He's 0 for 1. Hit right at Fernandez. Should be 2. Easy play. First double play turned in by the Blue Jays tonight. And the 23-year-old youngster is sitting in the driver's seat. 3-0 Jays lead it. You're watching LeBats Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Well, there are the standings heading into tonight's action. Uh, Blue Jays just two back. Boston, two and a half. Cleveland, who you saw earlier, leading New York. Three and a half back. And Milwaukee, four. And the Yankees still five games off the pace. At West, the Angels have a one-game lead over Oakland. Kansas City trying to hang in there. Bo Jackson still not 100%. John Watson saying that he's not going to bring Jackson back until he is exactly 100%. Texas slipping to nine games out. They really haven't scored the runs they expected to with the acquisition of Harold Baines. Well, a big blow in the ball game back in the second inning when Fred McGriff hit his 30th home run to the opposite field. He leads the American League. You know, you're talking about Kansas City, Buck. The Blue Jays, of course, Thursday will have an off day, then start a 10-day, 10-game road trip in Kansas City. They'll play three. And it'll be Flanagan against Brett Saberhagen. And all oh, Saberhagen was so sharp his last outing here against the Blue Jays. And we'll have that game for you on TSN. And then Stottlemyre against Gubaza. Saturday and Sunday, John Cerruti against Don Gordon. Or Tom Gordon, I should say. And of course, Tom Gordon Don, Don, ball, right babe. now is in the driver's seat for the Rookie of the Year honors in the American League. He is 12 and 4. <laughs> Stay tuned at the end of the game for the TSN turning point brought to you by Remington. The Remington Electroblade vibrating blade system with high-speed motor and vibrating twin blades glides so easily for incredibly close, smooth, comfortable shaves or your money back. Remington Electroblade. That Victor Kayam looks like he keeps getting younger, doesn't he? He's got that good shaver. McGriff with a walk. That's his 17th walk in the past 15 games, so uh, there's so many ways he can hurt you. I was at a noon luncheon today for the Ernie Witt uh, Golf Tournament, which will be held August the 21st up at Nobleton Lakes. And, and Ernie, this is the sixth year that he's holding this golf tournament. They expect to raise over $50,000. It is completely sold out. 39 teams will participate. And over the years, uh, that'll be almost $200,000 that his tournament has raised for Camp Dorset. That's sensation. Whose team are you on? Uh, sleeper. A sleeper, yeah. <laughs> I bet. I'm bringing my own team. Uh-huh, yeah. A sleeper. And, of course, Ernie will be our guest tonight on Extra Innings. We can talk about that golf tournament, uh, talk about the rookie, Mauro Gazzo, who's doing a great job tonight. Isn't that term ringer? <laughs> Sandbagger. Sandbagger. Oh, that's more like it. <laughs> you know, we finished so far back in that tournament last year. Even if I brought Arnold Palmer in this year, I don't think it would make a difference. It's a new year, Ferg. You've got a new set of clubs. <laughs> yeah, that I do. McGriff and a ground ball hit by Mc, by, uh, by Witt to Franco and Witt is out. Cito Gaston started McGriff on the play trying to create a hole in the infield but because of Witt's the pitcher's Witt's velocity Julio Franco held his ground at second. Witt's retired but they stay out of the double play. So Bobby Witt, who pitched five plus innings in his last outing against Detroit. The Rangers lost that one nine to six, and it was a no decision for Witt. 
He is in trouble in this game, trailing three to nothing. Mosby grounded out to Bouchel, the third baseman, back in the second inning. The reason a youngster like Bobby Witt, who has such good velocity, gets hit as often and as hard as he does is the fact that he doesn't have a pitch to complement it that he has good command of. You can see Sundberg was sitting up inside, wanting the fastball inside. Witt threw it outside. Even though Witt throws 94, 95 miles an hour at times, location and the change of speed are what really makes a pitcher effective. Watch where Sundberg sets up here. Witt wanted a different pitch. They're going to go away from Mosby. The breaking pitch is up and away. Totally ineffective. That doesn't do anything for setting up another pitch. Now Witt has thrown two balls outside. If Witt had thrown that one fastball that Sundberg wanted inside and put some doubt about location, then all of a sudden Mosby is not so confident to go out over the plate. Same location again, out over the plate. Witt only has command of that outside part of the plate. Mosby is a hitter now, is not seeing anything on the inner half of the plate to make him protect that inside plate. Now if he gets a pitch out over the plate, three and one, he should hit it hard. He's on with a walk. This is what managers hate to see from a youngster. Now they're going to get up a left-hander as Dick Egan, the bullpen coach, got the call from Bobby Valentine. Drew Hall has his glove. He's going to go down the steps and begin throwing. Drew Hall has made 24 appearances for these Texas Rangers and does not have a record. So the stage now has been set for Mookie Wilson with one down here in the fourth inning. McGriff at second, Mosby at first. And Mookie doubled and scored in the third inning. Blue Jays have got a chance to put Bobby Witt away in this inning if they could get a couple of base hits here. behind that fastball. Bobby Valentine had expected Bobby Witt to be where Kevin Brown is this year. Brown is 10 and 6 in his first year. He expected Witt coming off a strong second half last year to have a 10 and 6, 11 and 5 type year at this point. He felt that if he could get a 9 and 9 effort from Kevin Brown that Bobby Witt would be 11 and 5, 12 and 6 after that strong second half showing. You combine that turnaround with the fact that Charlie Huff is 6 and 11 tells you exactly why the Rangers are 9 games out in the West pitching. Ground ball it to win and they just get Mookie. Wilson hit the ball hard down the first baseline for the second time tonight. This time Palmero gets in front of it. Knocks it down. Flips to Witt in time to get Wilson. Just in time. <laughs> so McGriff's at third. Mosby's at second. And the batter is the second baseman, Nelson Liriano, who had an RBI single in the third. You know, the first part of this season, Liriano was so effective at second base, was hitting, was the player of the week. Had a great series against the Chicago White Sox, and then he tailed off, and then Manny Lee came on. They've complemented one another quite well. Lee batting 276 right now, Lariano 260. But combined, they've driven in 58 runs. That's good production from the second base position. 
Manny Lee with that long three run homer Sunday against the Yanks to center field. Of course, I guess we have to take into consideration that Manny spent about a month at shortstop when Fernandez was injured. Two and one the count. Fourth inning in Baltimore, the Orioles leading three to one. Cleveland leading the Yankees two to nothing in the fifth. Witt is the kind of pitcher that Liriano enjoys hitting off of. He has a good fastball, but doesn't have anything really slow and off-speed type pitch that will cause Liriano problems. Misses with that breaking ball. Well, that's it. When you know a guy like Witt who throws hard, you know that Liriano's going to be in the lineup. It's a better fastball hitter than Manny Lee. He likes the old number one. And he should get one right here. There it is! A shot deep to right! Kiss it goodbye! A three-run homer for Nelson Liriano. His third season this pennant stretch drive is starting to come together for the Blue Jays when you can get Manny Lee and Nelson Liriano contributing with three run homers that's a good omen Bobby Witt fell behind had a 3 1 pitch had to come in there with the fastball and Liriano loves to hit fastballs when he can look for them. he sat all over that pitch Nelly and Manny will be comparing home runs in case you missed it, Manny Lee hit one straightaway center field the other day. And it was quite a shot. Look at him. The two of them are sitting there. You'll get a smile. They're from talking, both of them. talking taters now on the bench. <laughs> Tail of the tape. He wants to see how far it went. And Nelson Luriano, such a fine young man, isn't he? He's really worked hard, even when he was out of the lineup. He always comes out, takes extra batting practice, always taking his ground balls, trying to make sure that he stays sharp. Never says much, just goes out and does his job. Fernandez goes down on strikes for the second time tonight, and he's having a tough time. But thanks to Nelson Lariano, his three-run homer, the Jays lead six to nothing. You're watching Levats, Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Pete Incavillo. People want to put the DH tag on you. How do you shake that? You don't shake it, no matter what you do. Um, it's something. Um, I wasn't a very good outfielder when I first came up, and uh, I'm the first one to admit it. And uh, Davey Lopes came over last year, and uh, you know, really taught me the basics, playing the outfield, how to get a jump on the ball, uh, uh, know how to get around a ball to make a good throw. You know, just just the basics that nobody's ever taught me. And uh, you know, I run fairly well for a big guy. I don't have lightning speed, but if I can get good jumps on the ball, I can make catches that guys who have lightning speed can do very easily. And uh, you know, the tag probably won't ever leave. You know, because once you're dubbed a bad outfield or a DH, it'll never leave. But I, I've proven, I think, to a lot of people in the American League and to the guys here in Texas that I can play the outfield and play as well as anybody. Nothing like a little honesty, is there, Buck? He's very frank about that. He said, listen, I'm not Willie Mays out there, but I'll give you everything I've got. In Gavilia became the first player in Major League history with 150-plus strikeouts in three consecutive seasons. He prides himself on cutting the number down a bit this year. He's got 90 strikeouts coming into this game. Two and two the count. Very conscientious both with his hitting and his fielding. He's always out trying to improve himself. Always one of the first ones at the ballpark. Fouls that one back out of play. You'll recall that Incavillia was drafted by the Montreal Expos in the June 85 draft, the first round. He signed, but said, hey, I don't want to play in Montreal. Actually forced Montreal to trade him to Texas. Never spent a day in the minor leagues. There he goes, down on 
strikes. And for the rookie, Mauro Gazzo, that is his second strikeout of the ball game. He has given up just two hits. There's a good breaking ball. He said sometimes he's a four-pitch pitcher. Looked like he has enough confidence. He mixed in the curve roll right there. Don't forget, uh, Les Mis coming to the Sky Dome August the 14th. Tickets $12.50. And all the proceeds, hospital for sick children. You know, I was talking to Gord Ash before the game about uh, Gazzo, and he said he saw him pitch a couple of weeks ago against Richmond. He threw a three-hitter complete game, and uh, he thought his best pitch that night was his fastball. And it looks like it is again yep. tonight. From the first pitch of the ball game, he's had a lot of confidence in it. He's come right at the Texas Rangers. Gord runs the minor league system for the Blue Jays, does a great job, and uh, there isn't anything he doesn't know about any of the players. Boy, I tell you, that minor league system, they're pulling up some pretty good arms. Cummings. Hernandez, Sanchez. Sanchez. And now this kid tonight. There's a ground ball. Hit by Bouchelle, and Gruber makes the play. Each time there's a ground ball hit to the infield, Gazzo looks around, and he's got Gruber, Fernandez, Liriano, McGriff, and the scene makes him very happy. Gruber goes to his left, takes an in-between hop, that strong arm across the infield. That's uh, got to make a pitcher very comfortable throwing strikes, saying, hey, these guys catch everything. I said to Gord Ash earlier, I said, well, who would you compare Gazzo to? And he said, kind of reminds me of Clancy. He said, he's not a finesse pitcher. He'll come right at you. And that's exactly what Gazzo is doing tonight. Kind of meat and potatoes yeah. of the pitching staff. Here it is, hit it. Fly ball, center field, hit by Sunberg. Mosby is there. What a great job by the rookie, Mario Goose Gazzo. Two hits through five innings. Jays lead it six to nothing. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Four hits for the Blue Jays off Bobby Witt. But it was a home run by Freddie McGriff in the second, his 30th. And then a three-run shot by Nelson Luriano in the fourth. And it is 6-0. Bottom of the fifth inning, Felix Gruber and Bell for the Toronto Blue Jays, who are trying tonight for the first time since opening day to go over the 500 mark. Fergie, there are a lot of similarities between what's happening right here in Toronto tonight and what happened to that 85 club when they won their first pennant. Gazzo coming up after a real strong showing in the minor leagues going 12 and 1. You'll remember back then Tom Filer came up and went 7 and 0 in the 85 pennant drive and really made the difference. Tom Henke came up midstream. The acquisition of Al Oliver and Cliff Johnson. Mookie Wilson. Lee Mazzilli. All of these things very similar to just what happened in 85. Junior Felix takes a fastball for a strike. Felix tonight is flying out in the first, struck out in the third. Junior Felix, a very important part of this club this year. You look back to that 85 season, the Blue Jays carried a couple of rookies, but they were Manny Lee and Lou Thornton who were drafted players and really didn't play much of a role at all. Contributions to this pennant drive. Cleveland leading New York two to nothing. Candiotti against Carey in that one. And Baltimore leading Minnesota three to one. And look at Detroit, what they're doing to Milwaukee. Six to three for Detroit. Robinson on the mound for Detroit tonight as Detroit scored five runs in the fourth. Over in the National, New York leading Philadelphia three to nothing, and Pittsburgh over St. Louis two to nothing. Of course, this afternoon the Expos lost to the Chicago Cubs four to two, as Fitzgerald homered for Montreal. Walton Sandberg with his 18th, and remember all the talk earlier this season about him coming to the Blue Jays. Mark Grace got his 10th, and there are the standings in the East Division. 
as the Expos now two games back of the Chicago Cubs. The Cubs have won 10 of their last 13. Don Zimmer asked if we have a leg up on that manager of the year award over there. Nobody expected the Cubs to do what they're doing. Two and two the count to Felix. Lines it up the middle. Kunkel made a great effort on that one. That's a good sign to see Felix swinging without any pain in that shoulder. Kunkel just came up short, gave it a dive, but it's a solid liner to sink to center. Well, he's 6'2", and he used every inch right there to try to make that catch. High fastball. Felix got on top of it. So Felix down at first, 14 stolen bases. He's been caught 10 times. And the batter is Kelly Gruber. 0 for 1 with a sacrifice fly. RBI slaps that one foul into the stands. Gruber came into this game tonight hitting less than 200 against the Texas Rangers couple of home runs. You know what I think it is? Gerber's from Austin, Texas. Always has a lot of family down at the ballpark. Always trying too hard, trying to really have a good weekend series or week series. I think he just puts too much pressure on himself. swing there really out of control so Gruber goes down that strikeout number five for Bobby Witt that's that hard breaking slider that Witt still trying to master where he can get confident to throw it anytime you know these Texas Rangers have lost five of the last seven to Toronto for two tonight. Flied out in the second. Struck out in the third. This road trip coming up for the Blue Jays. Three in Kansas City. Then they go to Boston for three. And then they play four in Baltimore. And what I think they have to do is win two out of three in Kansas City. The same in Boston. And if they just split with Baltimore. That's all you'll need to do. Well, Baltimore, of course, on that terrible road trip, they lost 12 games on that last road trip. Timeouts called. Sunberg got hit with the bat. Blue Jays have played well on the road. They're one game over 500. You know, when you say well, in comparison with <laughs> the rest of the season, of course. Hey, we're trying to celebrate going one game over 500 yeah. tonight. But, you know, they're going to Boston for that three-game set. They've got Burks back. They've got Barrett back now, although Barrett's just DHing. But their pitching staff is hurt. They're hurt, and Clemens is supposed to start on Friday. He came out of last start after just throwing 11 pitches, but doctors examined him, and he came through that okay. Boddicker has been bothered by a shoulder problem. The 1-1 pitch to Bell fouled back out of play. That's why I feel the Blue Jays should run away with this division. They're the healthiest club in the division. Jimmy Key just now going down, but you remember there's a sleeper lurking in Florida right now. Al Leiter coming back from the shoulder problem, throwing BP. All the reports are very positive out of Dunedin. A chopper down to Bouchelle, the third baseman. Two down. Felix is at second. So now if Leiter can come back and give them, say, a strong September, Key comes back after two weeks to his normal abilities, and we see him pitching like he's capable of, this is by far the strongest pitching staff in the division. Let me ask you this question, Buck. Do you think Jimmy Key hurt? the Blue Jays and the pitching staff by not going to Cito Gaston 
and earlier and saying that his shoulder was bothering him. The only thing that has keeps me from saying that maybe he did hurt him was the game he threw against the Angels. Blylevin beat him one to nothing. He pitched a five hit complete game and lost on a home run by Wally Joyner. I think that was still lurking in his mind that he might be able to crank up that kind of game. Bobby Valentine's going to go to the left-hander, Drew Hall, who is out of the bullpen warming up with uh, Gary Milkey. So that is it for Bobby Witt. Witt so far has allowed six runs on five hits, but two big blows in this ball game. Freddie McGriff's 30th home run of the season back in the second, and Nelson Liriano's three-run shot in the fourth inning. This pitching change is brought to you by Mark's Work Warehouse, Canada's number one store for Levi's. So Bobby Witt is gone. Drew Hall is into the ball game. And Bobby Witt was not that sharp tonight. The frustrations continue for the young right-hander. He just hasn't been able to put it together. You can concede a home run to Fred McGriff and say, well, he's leading the league in homers. But what hurts is when you give up a three-run homer to Nelson Liriano. And that really cost him dearly. He fell behind three balls and a strike had to come in with a fastball to a good fastball hitter. Here's Rick Leach, ex-Blue Jay, looking on. And he's done a pretty good job hitting just over 280 for the Texas Rangers. Drew Hall, the left-hander, has allowed 11 hits and seven runs in the 10 innings that he has pitched in the last eight games. He does not have a record. As a matter of fact, he has failed to retire a batter uh, five times in that span, so he has really struggled. He came from the Cubs with Jamie Moyer and Palermo in that deal for Kilgus, Mitch Williams, and Steve Wilson, along with infielder Curtis Wilkerson. And what a deal that has been for the Chicago Cubs and Mitch Williams. Wild thing. Mitch Williams is a large part of why the Cubs were in first place by two games tonight. He has harnessed that live arm and got a number of saves. 28 saves. One behind Mark Davis of San Diego. And he has certainly been the difference in that cup ball cup. Remember the nights in Texas when they'd bring Mitch Williams out of the bullpen and you never knew whether or not he was going to throw a strike. And you really had to hang loose in that batter's box. You're not a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Tread lightly in that batter's box against Mitch Williams. So it's the left-hander Drew Hall against the left-handed hitting Freddie McGriff here in the fifth inning with two down and Junior Felix at second. start the Texas Rangers got this year 17 and 5 in the month of April and it looked like no one would catch him especially when you looked at uh, Oakland and all the injuries that they had I see where Conseco's uh, he's gone down again I don't know how long he'll be out but he had something like uh, five home runs 15 RBIs and just a few games just can't stay healthy and a strike to count to Freddie McGriff. Kansas City leading Boston 2 to nothing, and that's in the second. And in the fifth, Detroit leading Milwaukee 6-3. to three. So the right teams won yesterday, and uh, the right teams lost yesterday for the Blue Jays. Same thing's happening tonight with the exception of Baltimore, and they're leading in theirs. As long as the Blue Jays can win their games, they don't need to be concerned about what the rest of the division does. Three and one the count to McGriff. He homered in the second, walked and scored in the fourth. He's on again. 
has been plagued by some control problems. Pretty hard thrower last year at Iowa. He saved 19 games for the Cubs AAA club. Nolan Ryan talking to Bobby Valentine. You've got to believe they're talking a little bit about Bobby Witt. What it's going to take for Witt to get it all together. Ryan's been there before. The frustrations of being a young, hard-throwing pitcher. Going out there with good stuff and really not being effective. It took Ryan several years to put it together and mastering a breaking pitch that he could throw over the plate. Witt off the glove of Drew Hall, and that's a break. Hall will get an assist as Franco makes the play at first on Ernie Witt. So Felix and McGriff left standed here, stranded in the bottom of the fifth. Blue Jays still lead it six to nothing as the rookie, uh, Gazzo, comes out. And he has done a sensational job for Toronto tonight. Just a two-hitter. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Now let's go to this TSN sports update. This update is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires. Bridgestone builds confidence. Well, if you're a Blue Jays fan, you're no doubt wondering what's happening in Baltimore tonight. The Orioles, two games up on the Jays, coming into action tonight. They are taking on the Minnesota Twins. A little bit of drama here. Fourth inning, Orioles leading 3-1. Twins load the bases with two outs. Dave Johnson delivers to Doug Baker and strikes him out to kill that threat by the Twins. Playing in the fifth inning in Baltimore, it is the Orioles leading the Twins by a 3-1 count. Now, let's check out the Indians and the Yankees. The Indians three and a half games back. Top of the fourth, no score. Man on for Corey Snyder. Watch here, he will crush well this Chuck Carey pitch to back. deep left center field. This one is gone over the 399 oh, marker. His 12th home run of the year. His first since June 24th. Two nothing, Tribe in the sixth inning. Let's go back to the Sky Dome. The Blue Jays in action tonight against the Texas Rangers. We will go back to Buck Martinez and Fergie Oliver right after this. Through the first five innings, Mauro Gazzo has thrown only 71 pitches and allowed just two hits, a couple of singles, to Harold Baines. He has been magnificent tonight. Not only the excitement of pitching in his Major League debut here in Toronto, but the fact is Gazzo is pitching in front of his boyhood idol, Bobby Valentine, the manager of the Texas Rangers. They both grew up in Connecticut. Valentine was a phenomenal high school football player and several scholarships and Gaza remembers him very well as a youngster. Gaza himself was an MVP in all three sports football basketball and baseball and has always looked up to Bobby Valentine for his high school athletic history. Jays of course took Gaza of Kansas City's Memphis roster where he was four and nine. He went to the Royals from the Mets in 87 as part of that David Cohn for Ed Hearn deal. You know that unknown player in there? Had a bad year last year. This is where the Jays minor league scouts really stand out. They get that unknown guy. Everybody knows about the stars. A shot at Fernandez, hit by Kunkel. One down. Isn't that the truth? Everybody can go down to Tidewater last year and see David West, six foot six, throwing 95 miles an hour, and send in a report and say, I think we should get David West. Well, sure, everybody knows that. But when you can pick a guy like Gazzo out of the Kansas City Royals organization, when he really wasn't that outstanding, you look at his record, he was six and five in Memphis, four and nine at Memphis his second year, and he really didn't do anything that stood out. The Average scout would look at that stat and go, oh, look at 4-9 with a 5-73, 92 innings, 127 hits. I don't really see anything there promising. You no, he give, needs more work in the minor leagues for sure. You've got to give the scouting department an awful lot of credit. They saw something they liked. The makeup. We talked about Gord Ass being reminded of Jim Clancy. They saw something that they liked. They gambled, rolled the dice for 12 grand. They're getting a pretty good outing, plus an outstanding minor league season from Gazzo so far. $12,000 in the world of baseball today is like a hot cup of coffee. 
It's a good cocktail party after a ball game. <laughs> The batter is Cecil Espy. Three balls and no strikes. That pitch is high. Now the question is, how long will they let Gazzo go tonight? I don't think they'll let him struggle. You have to let him finish up on a positive note. Everything has been so positive here tonight. But you can see that maybe the excitement of the game is getting to him. He's losing a bit of his composure, possibly. Looks like he's strong enough, but he really pitched out of it. Now you can see Al Whitmore checking the pitch count. Gaston leaned over and said, Al, how many pitches does he have? And Whitmore it gave it a look. 79, it'll say. Palmero, the batter, right up the group, and he's got the double play. How about that one? Once again, that major league defense gets Gazzo off the hook. That old rocket to the first baseman, Espy. He's out in no man's land. He doesn't even try to get back. It's history. Double play. And Gazzo is out of the inning. Six to nothing. And look at that smile from the rookie. That tells it all right there. These guys are pretty good. You're watching the best. Blue Jays baseball on TSN. These are the things that stories are made out of. Jimmy Key goes down with shoulder problems. A man out of nowhere, Mauro Gazzo, comes from AAA, has pitched himself into the sixth inning, giving him an outstanding outing. Mosby hits one into the left field corner. In Cavillia, nice play. Very nice play. Not much room down in that left field corner. 230 pounds of Pete Incovilla gets in motion. He doesn't shy away from anything. This ball is slicing into that left field corner, and the seats really jut out towards the foul line. Just inside fair territory. That's a lot of momentum to slow down. Yeah, I'd hate to have him charging my way. Good play by the left fielder, Pete Incovilla. Mookie Wilson now, the Blue Jays' left fielder. Takes one inside. Chop down to Bouchelle. He one hands it and delivers to first. The Levats player of the game for Texas will receive the Weed Eater, Canada's number one trimmer for convenience in lawn and garden care. Available in gas or electric model. Weed Eater, trimmers and blowers. Well, the other day against the New York Yankees, Manny Lee was the hero of the day with his blast to straightaway center field. Tonight. <laughs> See, look, all of his home run hitters. He said, I hit a three-run homer. Now I sit on the bench next to Junior. And tonight it's Nelson Liriano's turn with his three-run homer in the fourth inning. Four RBIs. It's a good night's work. Yeah, brings him up to 37 on the season. Liriano might have set the tone defensively with the first play of the ball game. You remember back in the first inning, Espy smashed a ball that looked like it was headed to center. Liriano made a nice sliding grab of it and retired Espy. Who knows what that might have done to the rookie Gazzo on the mound. If Espy gets on, maybe he steals. And maybe Gazzo has some trouble but that good defensive play by Liriano got the youngster off the hook early a ball and two strikes that one rung the bell of catcher Jim Sunberg 1919 games and he gets another shot to the coconut <laughs> so you want to be a catcher huh Sonny did you ever wear a hat like that no he must have played hockey somewhere, huh? Take a look at this. Boing. <laughs> Which way did he go? What did he hit me with? Where? I'll get him. One more round and I got him. <laughs> <laughs> that was a cheap shot. 
<laughs> Line to left field. Base hit for Luriano. And Cavillia gets it back in, holds him to a single. A little three for three night for Mr. Luriano. Confidence means an awful lot to a hitter. And Lariano having a good night, four RBIs, and then he collects his third hit. Incovillia does a nice job to get over there and cut off that ball, get it back, keeping Lariano at first base. I think his defense has improved 100%. We talked about it earlier, simply a matter of effort. He wanted to improve. He'd like to shake that DH tag. A lot of people think that's his best position, but quite frankly, he's played a very solid left field. Tony Fernandez, a rough night at the plate. He struck out a couple of times. You don't see him doing that very often. It's only struck out 36 times and almost 400 at bats. Two down, the Blue Jays have runners at the corners. That's the type of hit that might get Fernandez untracked. Just a little bounding ball, an AstroTurf base hit. Liriano goes first to third with two down easily. He'll check third base coach McLaren, give a glance back to the infield, see where that ball is. But for Fernandez, that might just be the hit that sparks him offensively. He didn't hit it hard, but it was well placed. He took advantage of this hard astroturf and got his first hit of the night. Now Junior Felix will swing from the right side against the left-hander Drew Hall. Oh. You know, the Blue Jays have sold out 26 of the first 30 dates here at the Sky Dome. And this series here with Texas makes it 15 consecutive sellouts. Wow. Ground ball. Conkle, the shortstop, will go to Franco to get the force on Fernandez. So Drew Hall pitches out of trouble here in the sixth inning. Manny Lee and Junior Felix enjoying a little laugh on the bench. And the Blue Jays are sitting on top, six to nothing. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. This is the play that ended last inning. Watch Fernandez as he's forced out at second base. Franco has already flipped the ball to the outfielder. He comes around and kicks Franco. I don't know if that uh, was intentional. I doubt it very uh, well, much, but it I think... It looked like it was to me. At there, it did. Yeah, That's yeah. angle, it did. But it, with Franco. Like he was kidding with him. Yeah. <laughs> Tony's okay. done some things lately that are very un-Tony Fernandez. Sierra Baines and Franco. I'll go along with that one. Goose Gazzo. By the way, he does not like to be called Goose. Well, then why do you keep calling him Goose? <laughs> <laughs> well, his high school coach put the nickname on him. And it'll probably stick. A high chopper by Sierra. Foul ball. You notice it takes off right at the bag, right before it gets to the bag. Gazzo couldn't catch up to it before it got to the bag, and once he saw he couldn't get it, he tried to pull out of the way and let McGriff have it. By that time, all three of the players, including Sierra, the runner, watch here. He's right there, and now he says, I can't get it. Try to tag the bag. He knew what he had to do, but his momentum carried him away from the bag. The ball was foul. Pretty good composure for a young pitcher to he's think had, about uh, tagging the bag. Yeah, he's had great composure tonight. 
was 23 years old in his major league debut. A ball and two strikes to Ruben Sierra. Sierra's mired in a batting slump. 0 for 2 tonight. It's pretty nice when you can be mired in a batting slump and still be hitting 318. The left field, Mookie is there. You sure have to get a little excited about that defense out there. Wilson in left, Felix in center. Well, it went from a team that was employing Borders and Lawless in the outfield to a team that's got Bell on the bench now. They've got Mazzilli on the bench. A lot of depth all of a sudden. And you got to credit Pat Gillick. He was criticized for being awful hesitant to make a deal, and all of a sudden he's making deals like crazy. Picked up Wilson, picked up Mazzilli. Granted, they haven't hit much, but they have done a lot to the personality of this ball club. I think they've sparked the intensity a bit. It was a little ground ball in yesterday's game. Hit by Mookie Wilson to advance the runner over. Got the job done. Don't forget our next telecast Friday at 8.30 from Kansas City. And look at this play by Gazzo. And he gets Harold Baines, the man Now, listen to the fans yelling goose. Goose and Mookie, and everybody's happy. Watch Gazzo's intensity. He's going to get it out right here. He slips on the mound, balances himself, and then fires a strike to McGriff. He has allowed just two hits through six and two thirds. So once again, we want to remind you that we'll have a couple of games for you out of Kansas City, Friday and Saturday, right here on TSN. And then the Dodgers in Montreal, Monday, August 21st at 7.30. He's exposed two games back of the Chicago Cubs after they losing today. Got to dig their heels in. They will. That they will. Franco got dusted his first at bat by Gazzo. And that sent a pretty strong message to the Rangers offense that hey this youngster is going to pitch inside going to come right after us. He's not going to be intimidated. And that has resulted in just two hits to this point. After Gazzo threw a good inside fastball to knock Franco off the plate he came back with a split finger pitch got Franco to pop up to second base. You got to believe that Ellis Dungan, who is a Blue Jay scout who recommended to the Jays that they uh, draft Gazzo from Kansas City, has got to be the happiest guy in the United States tonight. On his recommendation, they get this young man and he comes up and does such a brilliant job. Here's a rope hit to right center. Felix back and he's got it. Frustration of the Texas Rangers. They're hitting the ball hard off Gazzo, but the defense has supported the youngster. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. While we're watching, while we're watching a masterpiece being turned in by a rookie for the Toronto Blue Jays tonight, Mauro Gazzo has allowed just two hits. Bottom of the seventh inning. And coming to the plate for Toronto, it'll be Kelly Gruber, George Bell, and Fred McGriff. Drew Hall on the mound for Texas. Bobby Witt started, went four and two-thirds, six runs, five hits, struck out five. Freddie McGriff with his 30th home run in the second, and Nelson Luriano with a three-run shot in the fourth. Rick Leach has gone into play right field for the Texas Rangers. Gruber chops that one foul. Don't 
forget Detroit coming to Toronto August the 22nd for a three game series. And all three games sold right out. That's got to be some kind of record to have that many sellouts. Well, they will set a new attendance record as Gruber drives a shot out in the left center field. He's going to try for a double. The throw by Incavilia way off the mark. Not only will the Blue Jays set a new attendance record this year, I say they got a shot at $4 million next year. Keep going the way they're going. Gruber pulls a fastball into left center. Incavilia was playing in the pull against left-hander Drew Hall. And with Gruber's speed, he gets the leadoff double. George Bell, 0 for 3 tonight. Struck out just once. He's taken some good swings all night long. That was out in his wheelhouse where he likes that ball out over the plate to extend, but that shoulder problem probably holding him back a little bit. You know, you'd like to see George get two or three hits tonight. Maybe in the DH roll. In role. the DH roll. <laughs> That's what he's and thinking he about. Say, hey, maybe this is not a bad idea. Yeah, he said, I told you I couldn't hit as the <laughs> DH. <laughs> with that controversy when Jimmy Williams moved him to the DA spot. Everybody that follows Blue Jay baseball knows that Bell does not consider himself a DH. But Gaston has made a point to tell Bell, we're going to give you time off. Much bigger left field area. We're going to try to keep you fresher. We've got Mosby, Wilson, Mazzilli, Felix. Plenty of outfielders to give you a spell. Take advantage of it. Well, you've got to say, Buck, that the respect is there for Cito Gaston. And, you know, with Jimmy, he was at loggerheads all the time. Now, regardless of whose fault it was, and it might not even have been Jimmy Williams' fault. But Gaston has pretty much set the tone since taking over. Always keeping the lines of communication open. Lined up the middle. Drops in front of SB. And here comes Gruber. It is seven to nothing for the Toronto Blue Jays. For George Bell is 63rd run batted in this season. He's actually taken some pretty good swings all night long. This one is inside a little bit. He puts an inside out swing, fights it off into center field. Sure looks like they're going to do it tonight. Get over the 500 mark for the first time this season. You know that you got to forget about the opener that they won. They in Kansas City, they came back the day after and lost, and it was downhill ever since. Fergie, I think the Blue Jays are starting to send messages around the division that they're going to put on a charge here in August and September. You think on this homestand, Steve's outstanding performance, John Cerruti, a couple of complete games. Todd Meyer pitched a good game in defeat. Tom Gordon beat him. But I think the strength of the pitching staff is enough to give the rest of the club the message and the energy to say we're going to take it right down to the wire now and put on a big pennant search. Well all of a sudden Todd Stottlemyre has gotten serious about his career. That little stint down to Syracuse got his head together where he came back with a purpose. Two balls no strikes to Fred McGriff. A shot at Bouchelle. Nice play to Franco. Double play. McGriff hit it hard, opposite way. He didn't get fooled on it, but he hit it right at Bouchelle. Watch Franco, very unorthodox turn of the double play. He's in motion running across the bag when he had plenty of time to plant and throw. The double play has been a problem for the Rangers. They've only turned 92 
including that one right there. But Franco had a little more time than he might have thought right then. The ball was hit so hard. Ernie Witt fouls off that first pitch. You know, the Rangers have been struggling defensively. No errors in tonight's game, but they have made 12 errors in the last five games, and they're tied with the Blue Jays, both clubs with 93 on the season. And defense has been one of the big reasons that the Blue Jays have not played well. Early on, and now as you're seeing them improve their play, the defense has improved right along with that. You'll be able to ask Ernie Witt on extra innings tonight about the rook rookie Moro Gazzo. Be interest interesting to ask Witt just what he would thought of that. Eighth I'm inning, sure. Cleveland leading the Yankees two to nothing. And look at Baltimore, three to one in the seventh inning. Andy Audi against Carey in that Cleveland New York game. And it is six to three for Detroit. They're in the seventh inning. Mike Heath has hit his ninth home run of the season for Detroit. Witt goes down on strikes for the first time tonight. But a double by Kelly Gruber and an RBI single by George Bell gives the Blue Jays another run. They lead it 7 to nothing. You're watching the Bats Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Dwayne Ward is warming up in the Toronto bullpen. And his last outing was not a good one, but the Blue Jays will see how much longer they'll go with the rookie, Mauro Gazzo. He has been superb here tonight. Gazzo has given up just two hits, a couple of singles to Harold Baines. And that's it. He's sitting on a 7 nothing lead. You don't think he's walking on clouds out there? A youngster's dream. He started out in double-A, went 7-0 in Knoxville, was promoted to Syracuse June 16th, went 5-1 and one at Syracuse, and got the call, came right up, made his first major league start, the first day in town and has been very impressive. I just hope that his folks got here in time to see this game. And that his girlfriend got in from the airport. I'm sure she did. I'm sure they're all here and they couldn't be happier. And Cavillia, the hitter, he flied out of the second, struck out in the fifth. Gazzo only has two strikeouts tonight. But the interesting part of his performance, he's only walked two. And both walks to Cecil Espy, the leadoff hitter. You remember when we saw Alex Sanchez make his first major league start, control was a problem. He was a little bit anxious, a little tentative around the strike zone. We haven't seen a trace of that from Gazzo tonight. From the first pitch of the night, he was right at these hitters. Well, you pointed that out, Buck, in the top of the telecast about uh, his control in the minor leagues. Strikes him out. Second time tonight for Incavilia. Listen to this crowd yelling for the goose. Now, that was a slider down and away from Incavilia. Gazzo has shown an outstanding fastball. Doesn't look like it has an awful lot of movement on it, but the velocity appears to be real good. Split finger pitch. We haven't seen too much of that. Split finger pitch. Yeah. No, he's been basically a fastball slider most of the night. There's another Round ball. Oh, what a play by Gruber. Look at that defense of the Blue Jays. It's a hot smash. We've talked about it all night long. Gazzo standing on the mound. Can't believe what he sees. Gruber knocks a sure base hit down, gets to his feet, and retires Bouchelle. Gruber has really come into his own as a defensive third baseman. His air total has happened mostly on routine balls where he'll... Slack off a bit, make an errant throw to first base, but boy, range-wise and quick 
toughness. He has few peers. Jack Doherty has come in to pinch hit. Doherty. He was acquired from the Expos in September of 88 for infielder Tom O'Malley. Three hits, his last seven plate appearances as a pinch hitter. And has hit safely in five of his last six. has fallen behind 3-0. and all. Two down here in the eighth inning. He walks him. Sure be great to see him finish, wouldn't it? Gaston would like to see him finish, but he also wants to leave a positive thought on the pitcher's mind. You know, I thought they might try to get in tonight. And it's, that's why when you see Ward up and throwing with a 7 nothing lead, I thought they might try to get Castillo into the ball game because he hasn't pitched since they brought him up. And this would be a good opportunity for him to get an innings, innings work. There he is. Tony Castillo started out with the Blue Jays this season then was sent to Syracuse. they got to find out if uh, he can help this ball club. they got a seven-run cushion now. Now would be a good time. Of course, Wells is unable to pitch with that laceration on his thumb. Kunkel hits one. Fair ball. Inside the third base. He's got a double. Looked like he was jammed on that uh, ball. I think Hazel got the fastball on his hands, but he just fought it off enough to keep it inside the bag. The big right-hander might be running out of steam here. Just inside the foul line, Steve Palermo right on top of the call. Goes all the way down into the corner. Gaston checking with Dwayne Ward, see if he's all right. And I believe that's going to be all for the youngster. Sure looks like it. He checked with Al Whitmire before he made the stroll to the mound. And listen to the ovation that Gazzo will get here if Cito pulls him out. Look at a smile on his face. He said, whatever you want to do, Skipper's fine with me. He said, are you all right? And he said, yeah, I'm okay, I'm okay. Believe me, I'm okay. And a vote of confidence again from the manager. He came out to say, listen, young man, you've given me a great ball game. Keep it up. I know you can do it. You've got enough left. And he said, I sure do, Cito. Don't forget, tomorrow night, Dave Steve at 11 and 6 will go against Charlie Huff, who has a 6 and 11 record. Cedar was telling me before the game, he said, I'm sure glad we got Thursday off after we face Charlie Huff because he can really mess up our, our hitters. After that visit to the mound, Gazzo seems to be pumped up by the manager's confidence in him, comes right back with a good fastball to SP. Doherty at third, Kunkel at second, two down here in the eighth inning. He's trying to protect his shutout. Pops it up. They should have a play. Gruber over on the warning track. Look out. He banged his head, Fernandez. Hopefully he didn't hit it hard, but I think he hit the end of that tarp rolled up down there along the foul line. They were all trying to catch that foul pop-up trying to end the inning for Gazzo. Look at the effort by Gruber and then Fernandez coming out of the right of your screen. Watch Fernandez as he trips over Gruber. Gruber goes after the ball. Now watch Tony's head. See if it hits the end of that tarp. No, it didn't look like it hit that hard. Track. Maybe it's scraped that against that warning cheek. track. That is the cheek that he broke. Gruber concentrating. The ball drifts on him a little bit. Now Fernandez trying to jump out of the way. Everybody's all right down there. Yeah, he's up and he's going to stay in the ball game. You got to love that effort they put in going after a foul ball. With a 7 0 lead. See if he hits this AstroTurf, the rubberized warning track. He might have caught Gruber's shoe right at the end there, too. But look at that. You know, on that play, Gruber could have twisted an ankle. Fernandez could have rebroke that cheekbone. And all of a sudden, 
You're looking at Gruber and Fernandez out of the. Don't even say something like that. But the thing about it is, it was a foul ball out of play. But both of these guys trying to get the final out of the eighth inning for the young pitcher on the mound. You got to love that effort. That's something we've seen since Wilson and Mazzilli have joined this ball club. A different level of intensity from the Blue Jays. And Gazzo loves it. No balls and two strikes to count on the batter. Cecil Espy. Two down here in the eighth inning. Jays leading seven to nothing. center field shading SB to hit to left center back flies out of his hand and he goes down on strikes number four for Gazzo. what a job by the rookie they're yelling for the goose look at the standing ovation seven nothing you're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN Fernandez chasing that foul ball off the bat of Cecil Espy getting checked out by Tommy Craig the trainer naturally the concern is that cheekbone that was fractured down in Texas in April on a pitch from Cecilio Guante I don't know whether or not he hit the warning track or he ran into Gruber's shoe or, but it looks like Mauro Gazzo has had it for tonight Mazzilli giving him a congratulatory tap on the back saying great job youngster Kenny Rogers left hander for the Texas Rangers come on he'll pitch tonight this pitching change is brought to you by absorbing cream the relief specialist Absorbing cream makes aching muscles feel ah. Kenny Rogers, the left-hander, 2-0 with a save. This is his 49th appearance of the season. He has averaged almost a strikeout per inning. He's done a pretty good job for these Rangers. He'll face Mosby, Mookie Wilson, and Nelson Luriano. Mike Stanley is in doing the catching. Fastball, curveball, change up from the left-hander Rogers. It's been a pleasant surprise for Bobby Valentine. Good riding fastball misses high. Well, manager Cito Gaston and the Blue Jays got what they wanted tonight from the rookie Moro Gazzo. And a lot more, I guess, than one could ever hope for. A three-hitter through eight innings. A shutout ball. Talking Just, with Marty Patton, who saw Gazzo pitch in the minor league system. Now, Whitmar said if we could get five, maybe six innings, we'd be thrilled. Mosby tonight's looking for his first hit. Well, it'll be a great story on extra innings to listen to Ernie Witt talk about the rookie. the end of the bat didn't get the good part of the bat on the ball just lifted a fly ball to center field didn't hit it really square a reminder there's the number to call area code 416-445-1811 and talk to Ernie Witt our guest on extra innings and you can ask him about the pitching staff about Jimmy Key anything you wish Al Mookie turns to the right side of the plate He's one for three tonight, a double, and scored a run in the third. Well, the 
big story this season, I think, is yet to unfold. A 10-game road trip for the Toronto Blue Jays. Just around the corner. They'll be leaving Thursday night to open up in Kansas City for a three-game series. We'll have two of those games for you right here on TSN Friday and Saturday night. Well, with this win tonight, the Jays will go 5-3 and three on the homestand with a chance to go 6-3 and three tomorrow night's game. But you've got to be impressed by the way they've done it. Outstanding pitching on this homestand. Steve with that near-perfect game beating the Yankees 2-1 to one, and John Cerruti two complete game victories. Stottlemyre a good effort in a defeat. And now Mauro Goose Gazzo with oh, an outstanding performance. So even with Jimmy Key on the shelf, the Blue Jays appear to be putting together a pretty solid pitching staff for that stretch drive of August and September. And the hitting star of the night, Nelson Luriano. Four RBIs, three for three. And his third home run of the season. Nelson's worked awfully hard to improve his batting from the right side. In fact, now he's hitting better from the right side than he is from the left side. He's a natural right-handed hitter. But up until this year, he's always hit much better from the left side. He worked hard with Cito Gaston last year, end of the year, when he wasn't playing an awful lot, trying to improve from the right side. Tonight, a couple of hits from the left side. He hit a double last time up from the right side against Drew Hall. And now trying to get his fourth hit of the night against Kenny Rogers. He draws a walk. So it'll be a perfect night for Liriano. With two down, the top of the order, Tony Fernandez. And he's looking for his second base hit. Dave Steve against Charlie Huff tomorrow night. That'll be it for the Texas Rangers. Shell. He'll make the long throw to get Fernandez. And we're heading to the ninth inning. With Gazo out of the game, we'll be looking for Dwayne Ward to come out of that Toronto bullpen. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Now let's go to this TSN sports update. This update is brought to you by Zenith. The quality goes in before the name goes on. The Boston Red Sox two and a half games back of the Baltimore Orioles in the American League East, a half game back of the Blue Jays. They're in action against the Kansas City Royals tonight. Bottom of the second inning here. Base is loaded. Frank White at the plate. And he will send this one to left center field. Danny Tartable and Jim Eisenreich both come in to score. KC out to a 2-0 lead. Next we go to the third inning, 3-0 Royals. Randy Kutcher at third base and Wade Boggs singles to left. His 42nd RBI of the year. That cuts the lead to 3-1. Some good defense in this game. Watch here, bottom of the fourth inning. Watch the catch Kutcher will make off the bat of Bob Boone. Nice snag. It's 6-1 Kansas City leading Boston in the fifth inning. This afternoon, the Cubs beat the Expos 4-2. That means the Expos dropped two games back of the Cubs in that race for top spot in the National League East. Dwayne Ward has come out to pitch the ninth inning. There's his record, 4-9 with 11 saves. His last outing, he gave up a big two-run homer to pinch hitter Kenny Phelps. And he took his 11th loss of the season on Saturday against those New York Yankees. 94 strikeouts and 85 and two-thirds innings pitched. It's a good time for Ward to come back out there and regain the confidence that he has shown most of the year. That two-run homer. Cost the Jays a game and tagged another loss on Ward's record, but he's got a cushion tonight, and he should just come out and iron out the few problems that he's had with his control lately. The final line he's on... Been, oh, sorry, Excuse Bob. me, Fred. I was going to say, he's been very good last month and a half. He just had that bad outing where he gave up the home run to Kenny Phelps. 
48,689 fans here again tonight. And the final pitching line on the rookie, Moro Goose Gazzo. Eight innings, no runs, three hits, struck out four, walked three in his major league debut. What a performance. You know, sometimes players just have the kind of year that Gazzo's enjoying. He was 12-1 and one in the minor leagues. Looks like he's going to go to 1-0 and in the major leagues. And everything seems to be falling in place for him here in 89. He started out in double-A, went 7-0 and at Knoxville, was promoted to Syracuse, 5-1. and Now he comes here, first game in the major leagues. Looks like he's going to put up a W. Well, the Jays brought up Steve Cummings. He won a couple of ball games for them. He's back in the minors. Palmero, Leach, and Baines here in the ninth to face Dwayne Ward. Been a tough night for Palmero tonight. He's 0 for 3, hit into a double play. It's been a tough month for Palmero. He's down to 287 now. At one point, he was up among the leaders in the American League. Hitting around 3.30. Wicked breaking ball. So Ward gets a strikeout. One, two, three. Couple of fastballs, and then he throws that outstanding curveball. So hard and tight. Rick Leach, the hitter. There are the numbers on Rick, the ex-Blue Jay, 282 with a home run, 22 runs batted in. Leach looking over in the Blue Jay dugout. You know Bell was hollering at him. <laughs> hey, look out. They're getting some shots from that dugout on the Blue Jay side. Look at <laughs> <laughs> Bell, Manny Lee giving him what for? <laughs> Ricky Leach is what he calls him. Leach slaps one, base hit left field. Leach is in a bit of a streak. Hitting about 360 the last 13 games. This Hits this one by Gruber. Gruber's made that play all night long, but this one was just off the end of his glove. And he threw that one in there for George Bell. The batter is Harold Baines with one down here in the ninth and Leach down at first. Look what Bell's up to. Uh-oh. Off Ernie Witt's glove. Leach is going to go to third. There he goes. Silly play by Leach, really. You're down seven runs. There's, he made the play with his hustle. But what does it do for you? He hustled in there just ahead of the throw. His momentum carried him off the bag. Gruber very alertly stuck with Leach, and Leach is out easily. Leach is always hustling, but this play right here, there's really no reason for it. His club trails by seven runs. Look at Valentine. That didn't bring too many kind thoughts to his mind. Ground ball by Baines up the middle for a base hit. Harold Baines with three hits tonight. Ward has been struggling lately. it's a confidence thing where he really gets on top of his game where he has good command of his location where he can spot that ball down in the strike zone. He's got such a live fastball. He doesn't have to be concerned about the corners as much as the location. As long as he's down around the knees the movement of his ball will take it to the corners. ball 
right field. Felix breaks, and he's got it. So, John Eich, the Toronto Blue Jays, for the first time this season, move over the 500 mark. And what a job by that man right there. 24-year-old Mauro Goose Gazzo. Very confident all night long. What a storybook finish for this young man tonight. He came out here, three hits, eight innings, outstanding job. A night to remember for the rookie. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. The Blue Jays win it seven to nothing. And does Gazzo's performance remind you of anything tonight, Buck? The old Wally Pip story, huh? <laughs> Jimmy who? <laughs> nah, they're going to have to have key down that stretch if they're going to win this thing. But a couple of days off, a couple of missed starts, can't hurt him. Baltimore is leading Minnesota 6-1. to one. They're in the eighth inning. So officially now, the Jays are a game and a half back, but it looks like they'll remain two back. Jays win it. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Now it's time for the TSN Turning Point, brought to you by Remington. Second inning, no score in this game. Fred McGriff at the plate. He takes his Bobby Witt fastball, hits it to the opposite field for home run number 30 of the season, and a 1-0 Blue Jay lead. The Jays never look back. They went on to win it 7-0. A cash donation will be made to Amateur Sport on behalf of TSN and Remington, the grooming company. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays Baseball on TSN. Labatt's Blue Jays Baseball has been brought to you by Labatt's Blue, the clean, true taste of Canada, and proud sponsor of Labatt's Blue Pitch. From the major leagues to neighborhood diamonds, it's the way we play by SO retailers and agents across Canada, by your local bottler of Coca-Cola Classic, and by General Motors of Canada. This has been a special presentation of the Sports Network, produced in association with TV Labatt by authority, the Toronto Blue Jays. The Jays win it tonight, seven to nothing, and finally are over 500. The winning pitcher, Mauro Goose Gazzo. The loser, Bobby Witt at nine and 10. The Labatt's players of the game for Toronto. Moro Gazzo, he'll receive Cannon's new Prima shot for Texas Harold Baines. He'll receive the Weed Eater. As well, an amateur baseball team will be the guest of Gazzo and Cannon at a future game. And all members of the Blue Jays pitching staff receive a selection of fine gifts presented by Mark's Work Warehouse, Canada's number one store for Levi's. And by Absorbing Cream, the relief specialist. Our baseball magic winner, Mrs. B. Ridge of Etobicoke. And Major League Baseball next on TSN, Friday and Saturday, August 11th and 12th, the Blue Jays and the Kansas City Royals in Kansas City. And Monday, August 21st at 7.30, the Expos host the Dodgers. Now stay tuned for extra innings. Catcher Ernie Witt is our guest. Give us a call, collect.